has been a coach, mentor, and group supporter of single dads for many years. As a former single dad, he understands the importance of a father's role. No one can bless or harm your children like a father can. You are that powerful. Matt wrote the book, The Daddy Gap, with Dawn Walker. Matt Haviland. Hi, everybody. My name is Matt Havlin. I'm the Men's Center Director at Alpha Grand Rapids. I want to take a few minutes here tonight to encourage the dads um, at this event. Want, guys, I want to talk to you about being a dad today that's loving, a dad that's learning, and a dad that's leading. So what does that look like? Well, let's talk about loving first. Uh, it's about setting the emotions aside of the divorce um, for the sake of your family and focusing on your kids. Now, I know that could be very difficult, and that doesn't mean that you're not going to talk about the divorce um, when appropriate and in an age-appropriate way to your kids, but also being careful and mindful to guard your heart and the hearts of your children. Proverbs 4.23 says to guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the wellsprings of life. It's also maintaining household rules, routines, and discipline. This is a really uncertain time for kids, and kids equate uh, stability and protection um, with safety. So when kids have stable routines and they're still being uh, loved by the way that we discipline them, uh, that just brings a much more stable atmosphere in the home and puts the kids at ease. And also the way that we speak about and treat their mother. This is a, just an excellent example of how fathers can love their kids by the way that we treat their moms. Um, for our sons, it sets a role model for good or for bad of how men should treat women. And for our daughters, it uh, does the same for how women are worthy to be treated. So be very mindful uh, and uh, be able to set those um, negative and possibly even toxic emotions aside and just be uh, very careful of how you speak about and talk about your children's mom. But that's one of the greatest ways that you can love your kids through this time. Be a dad that's always learning. Listen, things are going to change. So know what resources are available. Take the resources that are available at this conference, resources that are in your community that are going to help you to um, not only have some support, uh, but to um, grow and hopefully to thrive uh, through this time. And uh, parenting doesn't stop. So we want to keep parenting. Stay involved with your kids' school. Stay involved with your kids' extracurricular activities. And just everyday stuff, you know. I mean, as your kids grow and age and develop, depending on their age, um, you know, be a dad and a parent that's consistently learning about um, that age group. Um, you know, if you have an adolescent or a teenager, know what's going on with the latest tech trends as well and stay up to date on things like that. And the last one is leading. Keep leading in the home. Boy, this is huge because when parents lead and they are in leadership roles, leadership in the home, leadership in the schools, leadership in the community, it inspires their kids to take on age appropriate roles as well. So think of some of the great ways that you can help your kids through this time. You're building resiliency, um, you're teaching possibly empathy, how to manage emotions. So these are all great um, life skills that your kids uh, will hopefully need, um, you know, one day when they're adults and that they could learn from you. Now, consistency. Please try to lead at home with the consistency that you have in your home. Um, I ran a small group for single fathers for a long time, and I used to always tell the guys, hey, um, if consistency is not being displayed in the other home, that makes consistency in our own home that much more important. And the last one, something fun that you can do, it's a way to lead, but also create some family bonding time, is fresh or fixing up, uh, freshen or fix up the kids' rooms. Um, maybe it's time to, to paint those rooms or uh, get some new furniture or redecorate. One, it not only creates some great bonding time and some memories as well, um, but perhaps you're still staying in the same house or maybe you moved to a new location. Something like that can be very comforting to the kids and help them uh, cope through this difficult time. So I wish I had more time to talk to you guys. I'm just going to leave you with my life verse. Jesus says in John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief comes to steal and to kill and destroy that. But I came that they may have life and have life abundantly. That's his promise to us that no matter um, the trials and all the hard things that we go through life, when we stay focused on Christ, um, then he will lead us in an abundant life. I wish you guys the best. God bless you. One of the things that my dad did, which I think was pretty smart, to help reestablish the relationship, it really was broken after the after the divorce. That first year, after, first full year after the divorce, he took me on a trip, just the two of us. And he actually took us on a huge adventure trip out to Utah, and we did whitewater rafting for like a week. And we always love to do adventure things together. And so I think that was 
a pretty amazing thing. I don't know where he got the idea to do it. And then for the next like five years, even though he got remarried and he had a family, he continued to take me for a week every summer somewhere that we wanted to go together. And sometimes we just got in the car with our cameras because we both like photography and we just drive. And then he'd say, do you want to go right or left? And I would say, right. And we ended up one time at Prince Edward Island and taking pictures and eating lobster. And some of those trips were some of my best memories. And it really helped to heal a lot of the pain. And we kind of rediscovered what we found so great about each other. I really think that those were good trips. Laura Bove is a professional counselor and international expert on attachment. Attachment is the bonding of parental relationships that forms the way in which we relate to others in adulthood. Laura will speak to us tonight on how to speak honestly with our children about the divorce and what conclusions they may make if we are not honest with them. Laura Jean Bove. Laura, thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. I'm very excited. Thanks. Yes. You are the attachment expert, and this is an important topic as we discuss divorce and the effects on our children. Could you speak to us of why this is such an important topic with divorce? Sure. Well, attachment is important on a whole range of issues. And of course, it is, does affect divorce and the divorce affects attachment. And attachment is the way that we relate to people. And there are two primary attachment figures that we normally have. One is with our original caretakers. Those are usually our parents. And for the young baby, it's usually mom who's caring for the child. And it's the way mom and the infant interact and how mom and dad raise the child. And then our next most significant attachment figure, now there are other minor ones, Ones, but the two primary are, again, the caretaker-child relationship and then a romantic relationship. And that, of course, would be a spouse for most people. And so those are very critical. And the way that you relate to your ch children and your children relate to you, that style of attachment then affects your actual romantic relationships as well. So they're all interrelated. Yes. Thank you. So why is divorce especially difficult for children? Well, when you think about someone who is getting a divorce, let's take the, I'm going to use the wife in this example, and then divorcing the husband, she has a very strong, often has a very strong attachment. So even though things could have been, say, in a destructive relationship, very, um, say, emotionally abusive, whatever, she could still have longings for that spouse. And so I think understanding the fact that you have these very mixed feelings and going through that. Um, but normally adults would have a lot of resources for actually coping with such a huge loss, such as a spouse. Children, on the other hand, the other spouse could be another attachment figure for the child, depending upon the spouse, they will say the husband in this situation, husband slash dad, and the relationship that he had with his children. And so children could be experiencing a loss of dad, even if they see him regularly, he's still out of the home, they probably are not seeing him as frequently. And just the whole breakup of a, of a relationship of mom and dad, that can affect children. And studies do show that attachment and divorce um, are greatly affected and affect children into adulthood and even the kinds of relationships that they form later on. That is important to note. Uh -huh. So could you, could you give us some guidance in sharing the truth for the reasons of the divorce to our children, realizing it's going to vary depending on their age, but just some general information and guidance? Sure. Um, so one of the things that I say in telling the truth to your child is that in order for us to say form secure attachments and to know what, what, what happened and what went wrong in our lives and even people whom we need to forgive, that's all part of forming a secure attachment is I really do believe that parents and let's say you're the mom in the home and your spouse is out of the home now and you're primarily the one raising your children, that you wanna be able to go ahead as you asked, sharing the truth with your child and how are you gonna go about that? And oftentimes in the books that we read, it may be saying, oh, just be very positive. Do not, don't say anything negative about your spouse and so forth. But 
without being derogatory or overly negative, we, our children still need to know the truth because they may not understand why somebody left. If it's like, oh, we just didn't get along or, you know, we just kind of grew apart because that could create a lot of fear in the child. Well, does it mean if I don't get along with mom today or we have an argument, is mom also going to leave us? So you want to let them know that this is a very, very serious decision that was made. And a, as a result of some let's say some very negative things that occurred and probably the child often knows what those are but sometimes they no, don't know especially if it happened when the child the divorce the separation took place when a child was very young and so there are certain principles that we have for going ahead and telling the truth to a child in divorce one of the things is that it needs to be age appropriate so we all know that we're going to share the the facts of life with our children and so if you're going to say something very different to a three-year-old than you're going to talk about say with a 12-year-old so the same thing would going on when you're talking to your child about the divorce and what happened again the biblical principle is always speaking the truth in love and so that's really critical as we do this so um, I just wanted to um, make that really strong that I do believe in truth telling um, because otherwise the child is going to feel like there's a huge gap in their life regarding that um, don't always wait for a child to bring up the subject either. And you're saying, oh, yes, my child never asks about certain subjects. Well, and also, you remember when you grew up, if you asked your parents maybe about the birds and the bees, so to speak, and you kind of got the look, well, you know, where do babies come from? Well, the same thing with your child. If they sense from you that, oh, if I approach the subject, say why daddy isn't here or what happened, and you sort of give them the look, well, they're going to know that's a closed subject. So you, you need to be open. Again, it doesn't mean that if they're very young that you need to share everything with them or into the level of depth that would be uncomfortable. But the fact that you are open and that is it's not just what you're saying, but it's also your body language and the welcoming of questions coming to you from your child. Um, obviously, never denigrate or use inflammatory language regarding your ex-spouse. And, and sometimes that could be very difficult um, to do. You might say your, your father made some poor choices. One of the things that I feel like needs to be really careful with children, having worked with children, is sometimes parents will tell the child that um, a birth parent or a parent, let's say in this situation, an ex-spouse had a medical problem or he was sick. Um, in regards to being having an having alcoholism or having drug abuse. And oftentimes children then when they get older and understand that, oh, my my father, the reason that he's not in the home and he's, you know, can't take care of us is wasn't because he was sick, it really was because he had a drug addiction. And so I feel like it's really important to tell children the truth regarding this, because I have seen with children, when people say that, it's like, well, you didn't really tell me the truth. And then they start to worry about the parent. Oh, he was sent away because he had an illness. Again, am I going to be sent away if I have an illness? So um, being more clear about some of the reasons that are there. Um, acknowledge the child's history. Um, you want to go ahead and be very truthful again with your child that if they have experienced something that was very negative, say, for example, your ex-spouse was verbally abusive to your child and said to, to your son, oh, you know, you're just a baby when you cry like that. Allow the child to speak about that. You don't have to say anything negative about your ex-spouse. You could just say, I know that really hurt you when daddy said things like that to you. And then maybe follow up with a question saying, what do you think, why do you think that, um, why do you think people cry? And, and then talk about how crying could be a good thing and that it doesn't indicate that you are a baby. Again, shifting the conversation, but at the same time, don't ever gloss over it either. You know, the term that we've all kind of learned more recently is gaslighting. And we certainly don't want to gaslight our children and saying, you know, when I go to daddy's house, I don't think he really likes me. And instead of coming across and saying, oh, of course your daddy loves you. You know, he just does this. That's gaslighting a child. Just 
ask them more questions saying, well, what happened? What made you think that daddy doesn't like you? Or maybe his new spouse or girlfriend or whatever. Uh, be, you know, be inquisitive, be curious. Um, again, never being negative about what's going on um, regarding that, but just, but just letting the child express himself. Um, be careful what you also share with others. You know, when, when we're going through a divorce, um, we want to share with our friends. Those are our support systems. But also many of the reasons why we're getting divorced may be the way um, an ex-spouse has treated the children, especially if he was abusive and, and said things or, you know, again, whatever, whatever it may be, drug seeking. Or, but at the same time, you want to be careful that if that's also part of the child's history. So if you feel like, say, for example, let's say your, your um, husband wanted you to have an abortion, things were not going well, you were pregnant, and he suggested that. That's really, really an integral part of your child's history. You don't want to necessarily share that with other people. Now, eventually, could your child find out? Perhaps. And would you ever want to share that with your child? In a very, a very, very mature child, perhaps you could share that with. However, that does not need to be shared with other people um, regarding that, even if that's one of the reasons why maybe you did divorce your spouse. Um, I, I think I've um, implied this all along. Keep your tone regarding um, the ongoing issues with your spouse kind of neutral. So let's say your um, ex-spouse did not pay child support this, this month, and you had told little Johnny that you were going to go ahead and buy a bicycle. Uh, for him. And you, instead of saying, you know, your father, once again, didn't pay what he's supposed to. I can't believe what a bum he is. And, you know, I know he spent it on alcohol and his girlfriend, you know, those, those kind of inflam again, inflammatory language that you're using, just say, you know what, um, I really thought I could buy that bicycle for you. I'm really sorry. I'm just as disappointed as you are. Unfortunately, we didn't get the money that mom was counting on this month. And again, that's really hard to keep your tone very neutral. So you may need to go talk to a friend about it first without your children around and say all those things that you need to go ahead and say so that by the time you explain that to your child, you're in a much calmer uh, position. That's exactly what I was thinking, Laura, is it requires a maturity. And I love that, that if you go and you spew all you need to spew to process through it, and then you come back to your child to parent them well. Yes, exactly. And, uh, but then again, if your child asks, well, is it because daddy didn't send the check? Again, be honest. Um, don't, you don't need to sugarcoat it. Say, yes, I know. And it, it hurts me a lot. And I know it hurts you. And if they need to talk further about it, let them go ahead and share. Again, asking some of those open-ended questions. Um, and they, if they say, you know, do you think it's because daddy was using drugs or because he's using alcohol? and saying, it, it may be, honey, and I know that makes it even harder for you. And, and so let them be able to talk it out um, with you if that's what they need to go ahead and do. Um, also, go ahead and pray for your spouse. You know, um, I, I was sharing um, before that I worked in the field of adoption, and I still do, and um, so many times people with birth families, we, we pray for them. And I thought, you know, we should really go ahead and pray for um, our ex-spouses. And, and this is your children's father. And so as you have devotions in the evening, you may want to pray. Now, if the child wants to pray that daddy would, you know, heal from drug abuse or alcoholism or whatever it is that may be afflicting him, that's, that's fine. I probably would stay away from the big, big topics and again, it's not a time to spiritualize, spiritualize and be sanctimonious about, you know, where you are versus where your ex-husband is, but to go ahead and just seek his salvation if he's not a Christian, to, to pray um, for his well-being. Um, the other thing, too, that I would say is that you do want to encourage your children to be at, at least visit or in some way communicate with um an ex-spouse. Again, having worked in the field of adoption, when we work with birth parents, sometimes certain birth parents aren't always safe and you must be very careful. And so even with ex-spouses, some of them do have some dangerous habits. And I, I know there's a whole wide gamut. So if your child can at all be with their father 
or maybe it's in a public place, maybe it's very much with supervised visitation, whatever it might be, you never want to be the person who's holding back your child um, because they become then embittered. You know, it's always the forbidden fruit that's the tastiest. And so if you keep saying to your child, no, you can't see your father, no, you can't communicate with him, he's a bad man, he does bad things, you could explain to your child, say, you know, we just need, we, we want you to be safe. We want you to be careful and I can allow this. And in the day of social media, whatever you might be thinking that you're hiding from your child, you are not. Your child, if and I'm sure they do, they know your ex-husband's name, their father's name, and they are going to go ahead and seek out information. And if he's posting things to social media, they are already going to be knowing about it so that there is nothing that you can um, really keep from your child at all regarding that. Yeah, these are wonderful practical tips and tools to help parents as they deal with their children and they deal with their former spouse. Um, thank you for your expertise and the attachment piece. And, and we never want to be part of that severing of the attachment with our children and the other parent. That's because right. They, they need their mom and they need their dad equally. Exactly. Exactly. So thank you so much. I appreciate this. Oh, I appreciate your words and your contributions into this seminar. Thank you, Laura Jean. So I hope your notes are full and your heart is determined. I know that's a lot of information to be absorbing in one night. However, this is a point of discussion where you can open up conversation Maybe it's with your therapist, maybe it's with your group. Certainly in my support groups, we talk about these things. But this information is to inspire you, to give you tools, and to give you hope. Because you are going to make it through this very difficult transition, and your children are as well. Because you're going to be that consistent parent that is going to love on them, that is going to show them the right way of life, what love truly is, what commitment truly is. So I wish you the absolute best on that. Please connect with me if we can have conversation. Take this material and have conversation with it. It's so much information, it needs to be digested and processed. So I would encourage you to have conversation on this topic. We are just simply going to close with a prayer over our children, and then we will hear some music to dismiss us with. So thank you for joining us tonight, and I wish you the absolute best. And my prayer is with you, and we love you, and we hope that your journey through divorce with your children is going to be an avenue for you to grow into an even richer person and e an even better parent. So join with, with me, if you would, of prayer over our children. Father God, you are the perfect father and you have created us as your children. Lord, you understand the frustrations, the disappointments, the pain when our children go astray or when we can't reach our children because you, the perfect father, are always trying to reach us. Lord, I would pray for every parent that is listening that you would give them the discernment and the wisdom that they need to guide their children. Give them the love, the patience, the truth. Help them to take all of this richness that has been given tonight and apply it into their children's lives. Lord, we cannot do it without you. We cannot do it without you when we ask your presence. Lord, when my son was in his teen years and I didn't know how to pray, I prayed, God, will you just be present with his life? And that will be sufficient to guide him and to lead him. Father God, we thank you for the blessing of our children. Raise us up to be parents that are worthy of this incredible task because we know nothing will affect our lives and our futures more than what we do now with our parent, as a parent. We love you and we praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.